Welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, Moments to Dream Again, Part 3, Intentional Garden Tour for 2023, covering fall and winter through September and December, and we are in Zone 6. Each year gives an opportunity to design a new garden and grow again. Recalling those special times in the garden inspires us to try again and make the garden shine one more time. So we dream, imagine, design, and plan a new space that is unique to us. The intentional garden can be our reality as we cultivate and care for each plant, pull the weeds, and spread the mulch. As you experience this journal, think about what makes you most happy and content. Enjoy this process. Start to explore your likes and dislikes. Get yourself a couple of seed catalogs and garden magazines. Fill your mind with beautiful designs, plants, and garden art. Create a collage of what you want to see for each season. You can have tulips in spring, roses in summer, sedum in autumn, and evergreens in winter. Remember that each season is unique, so enjoy the process and appreciate each moment to the fullest. I hope that you will enjoy this video and that it will give you the inspiration that you need to dream again. On my dining room table, I made a nice tablescape of all of the pumpkins that I gathered that I really love and want to see here. Yes, on my table. And I want to make sure that I save these seeds. I think that they are so beautiful. And by the way, here is a copy or two copies of my journals that I put together, the Intentional Garden Journal. I have it in paperback as well as in hardcover. And I do love the paperback because to me it is just easy to use. It has a glossy cover so if I spill something I'm able to wipe it off. And it's just a really good size. And then the hardcover is fabulous and would make a really great, um, I would say, keepsake of what is happening in my garden. I love the color pictures, both of them. Um, the pictures are in color of my garden. But what I would do is I would use this one to write in to make my uh, messy work in this one and then trans, you know, transpose it into this one and keep this one as the keepsake, you know, the neat and tidy one. Um, and to pass on, pass it on um, as an heirloom for my children and grandchildren and that they can see grandma's a great grandma's garden. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. Well, I am happy to tell you that we are in September, and this is the first Sunday of September. And my deck is just filled with a whole lot of plants and I've started my fall gardening here 
and it is looking really really good I am just pleased with everything so I do have these mums that need to get in the ground and I'm going to be planting them out um, this sometime this week and then I also have here my basil I decided that I needed to see if I can get some good basil um, from them before the season is out so that I can save the basil so what I did was I divided the basil and I put it here um, in these containers because I had some soil yeah so I got some soil some potting soil from Lowe's and so I repotted uh, these basil plants here and I'm going to tell you more about that and I might even divide them a little bit further yeah so I have a patch here of basil uh, and so I just want a little bit more so that I can save the basil for the winter months and then here I have my um, different pots uh, and I'm starting 10 different vegetables uh, for fall planting in these pots here on the deck and that's where I'm going to keep them for now but check out my beautiful deck garden that I have here and it's amazing how the impatience have just expanded and are looking so beautiful here this is my herb bowl which is full and uh, everything is still growing very well there and then I have some other plants and flowers and things um, my petunias here my proven winners petunias have done very well and give me a lot of good color yeah and so here is my um, deck and um, also I uh, here on the deck I have the greenhouse my little greenhouse plastic greenhouse where I'm going to be storing um, these pots and things and keeping my vegetables um, going for the winter so we're going to try that out you know and when the temperatures drop or when it freezes I'm going to put them in the greenhouse and um, try and have vegetables and things for the fall and into the winter months yeah, so that's what I've been doing and I'm excited about it and there's more to come I'm going to take you through the process so that you can see what has happened and um, it's, it's going to be really interesting yeah so stay tuned for this good morning good morning and welcome to Catherine's garden and home where we grow 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 together so this is the first Sunday in September and this is what the garden looks like the Sun is up and it's a sunny morning squash plants, pumpkins have really been taken over here in the garden and it is, it's beautiful and they are experiencing some powdery mildew but other than that I love how it
It's a beautiful morning and it's going to be a warm one. It has been a cold, but now it seems like the heat is just picking up anyway. I just wanted to show you here how the purple perella is now flowering and it's giving this beautiful little flower um, spikes that just look very well with the Cleome. I just love how it looks here together. The lighting is bright, the sunny day, so it is kind of difficult to uh, display everything, but this is what we have. This is what it looks like today on this day. We do have some different flowers coming forth, which is good. And things are just looking pretty nice this morning. Everything is large and growing. good to see. What is happening here in the garden? We're going to have a couple of days that are going to be full of um, heat warmth. Uh, we had cooled off but now it's going to be heating up and things will get a chance to grow. It seems like the squash plants and pumpkin plants are just picking up speed now. And it's, it's pretty, pretty good. And here we have the elephant ears just getting larger and larger. I'm amazed at how this side garden has just exploded with so much color and uh, life. And then the elephant ears are just looking so good. Um, it's so full. The cosmos are, are very pretty. I love the, the Cosmo flowers. Also love the marigolds. They are um, opening up now, looking really good. And we have the Cleome. We're experiencing another flush 
of flocks. This purple flocks is beautiful. And I can also see that my roses back here, my mother pearl rose, It is flowering too. It's so pretty. Cosmos is definitely taking over here. Mm, I love all of the different colors, designs. So pretty. It's definitely a naturalistic garden. I think Penelope Hop House would be very proud of me. Sedum Autumn Joy is getting deeper in color as well as the uh, Little Lime Hydrangea. Looks like it's even providing some more flowers there. My um, other fig tree is over here and I'm going to need to get in there and move it but it looks like it's growing very well and the squash is just moving through look at that and these daisy like flowers have done very well here in this front garden and um, I, I like it I do like it there my spirea continues to thrive and spread which is good and everything looks happy even my beautiful shrub here is doing well in the pot. This is a boxwood green beauty and it's been in this pot for a while for a couple of years now I think three years now and it's looking good and here's the other one on the other side too. I have planted in here the strawberries in the box and they're now starting to uh, fill out which is good yeah this is this side of the border and it definitely looks like an English garden an English border in my urban cottage garden here in Boston. <laughs> Very nice. This is the other side. Of course, I need to come in and deadhead my Pinkabelle rose here. And that's the wild rose there that's really taken off. But here, check this out. This is my fig tree that I grew over the winter time in the house from a stem cutting in the stem cutting and look at how it has grown 
This is a propagated fig tree from my Bensonhurst fig tree that is now uh, producing. And look at this, it is also producing figs. It's kind of late in the year, so I don't think it will come to much, but it's good to know that it is able to produce. And I had started this fig tree as a cutting, and now look at how it has come to uh, this size and how it is actually ready to to fruit. That is amazing. I, I am just thrilled at how this amaranth Love Lies Bleeding has just uh, continued to flower and cutting it back has actually been a benefit. I think that I, I appreciate it better with these smaller fronds um, of uh, flowers and it just looks really good. Underneath it is the sedum which is looking good and even my little chrysanthemum, I mean, not chrysanthemums, <laughs> marigolds that are growing underneath. But what I am so thrilled about is my Rose of Sharon, which is flowering. Look at that beautiful flower. And it matches so well with the amaranth. It has a lot of buds still on it. So it will still continue to give flowers and bloom and interest. So next year this amaranth will not be here and it will have uh, an opportunity to really grow and it'll look pretty here and I think it will look so good with the sedum at the base here bottom of it this is just looking so pretty here this is the other side of the border and the Cleome this Cleome is really amazing I love the Cleome but you can also see that my um, hibiscus, that they're doing really well here, in spite of the fact that they're so close to one another. And uh, there's something about this purple perella that reseeds itself, but it just is the right color, the right color. I do have to be a little bit better at spacing, but now that these perennials have taken on such um, a, a good amount of growth, I think I will be more understanding of the spacing that they need and remove some of the other things that can hinder them from really growing into what they need to be. This here is one of my hydrangea plants um, and hopefully next year I will oh it looks like it's gonna have some flower there at the top there but hopefully next year it will survive the winter and I will have some more blooms on it but I do like this little patch here I am happy with what I see here with the pot of geraniums and marigolds here and it looks good with the hibiscus also my pinkabell rose looks good here as well mm -hmm. 
I did put in this corner a pot of uh, elephant ears. Uh, next year I'm going to put it in a larger pot uh, because I think that it would just look good in this garden space. Now as you can see I had planted the squash different types of winter squash here and they are just resting on this evergreen shrub which is really good because I need the space <laughs> so this is this is what we look like right now good morning good morning and welcome to Catherine's garden and home where we grow 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 together well, this morning I have all of these pumpkins. I have all of these squash. Well, really these I think are pumpkins. And as you can see, they are starting to get their orange color. They look so beautiful here. And you can see the different types growing here and the different sizes. I kind of lined them up according to their color code here from the deepest orange all the way through to I would say the lightest orange I think I would change this one <laughs> and put this one look at this at the end something like this yeah so what I want to do is I want to I want to cook them and use them and I don't want them to go to waste because I think that they each have their own specific flavor and taste and I just want to be able to make sure that I save seeds of them and really enjoy these pumpkins but right now I am just enjoying looking at them and their diverse diverse appeal here <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I was saying but that's what I feel okay but anyway here on the table I have some more and definitely these little dumpling um, pumpkins or squash that's definitely the winter squash uh, they are so pretty and I just love looking at them they have um, such a decorative appeal and definitely using them here on the deck to bring this festive look especially when I look through my kitchen window I am able to see this beautiful beautiful picture tablescape they call it and during our Wednesday coming together live session um, I was able to put together this beautiful bouquet of flowers from the garden and I am just amazed at how its beauty has just unfolded here and this is since Wednesday it's been out here on the table since Wednesday and today is Friday and look at how beautiful it is absolutely gorgeous I love this coloring I love the plants and the plants that I used are um, my Ooh, look at the birds they've come to join us <laughs> little sparrow mm. yeah I've put together this bouquet and uh, this is uh, the little limelight hydrangea flowers yeah zinnias the zinnia pack that I got from uh, the Dollar Tree 
and uh, and then this is amaranth love lies bleeding look how beautiful that is I have just been reveling in its beauty and how gorgeous it is. And then these fronds are from my zebra grass that I have in the front garden. Just, I just love the fact that the garden brings out my creativity. And I think that's the point that I want to make with you this morning is that gardening is not just about gardening there's so many aspects and so many different facets to gardening uh, one of the things that I really had emphasized is that gardening is my therapy when I come out here and I sit and I enjoy the sun the smells the sounds the beauty of my produce, flowers, the um, growing of different uh, plants and fruits and vegetables and things like that, that gardening becomes my therapy. It becomes the way in which I am able also to create and to plant and create something. I mean, it's just, it's just a really wonderful expression uh, that it allows you to express yourself in a creative manner. And so you're able to plant, you're able to arrange, you're able to design um, from the produce that you've uh, created, you're able to cook and to um, make something. Now just look at this this pumpkin. I love how the stem created this design here. Um, I could have cut it off but I just think it's just so pretty. It just looks so good here with the other objects that are on this table and so I want you and me to be more observant of what is going on in our lives to just be more aware of what is going on and to make things happen for ourselves what I find so interesting is that these petunias from Proven Winners, and this is uh, Petunia Bubblegum, I believe, uh, it is looking so good and it's still providing uh, these beautiful flowers here. And I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I think next year I'm going to buy some more and put them out in the landscape, either in containers like this or um, directly in the ground. It will be interesting to see how they last. Here in the garden. Uh, enjoy the moments to explore, to design, to create. Look at this. Just even on this side, um, I was able to design this corner and have it look like this with the pumpkins. Now these are the ones that I'm not too excited about, these pumpkins here. I don't know, I don't know if I want to eat them but right now I'm using them as part of the design core I think 
that um, they're, they are finding a use. <laughs> and then I have here my basil. But it's all coming together to look beautiful, to provide beauty on my deck. So I guess what I'm saying is to start to think of the garden as a place where you can express yourself, that the garden becomes an expression of who you are and what you're about. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. This is a beautiful Saturday morning, the last Saturday in October. And this is what has happened to my beautiful golden tree. The leaves have fallen off of the front and it's just the back side that still is holding on to its beautiful golden leaves. I just love how it looks. It is so beautiful. I'm going to miss the leaves on the trees here because these leaves provided a wonderful barrier or protection. It was surrounding and keeping me um, feeling very safe. Uh, the reason why I say that because it would get, provided me privacy in my garden and really made the garden feel like a secret garden. But now it's a different season. A season where everything is just being exposed. <laughs> We're getting to see the bones of the garden. In a few more weeks these leaves will have disappeared and what was green would be no more we'll just see the structure of the garden I do love living in New England and the reason why is because the land goes through these different seasons I, I love the springtime, I love the summer, and I also love fall. And yes, winter has its beauty too. Yes, it can be hard sometimes to let go of the past to want to stay in a particular season. But that's not good for us. We're not able to grow and change. We're not able to then harvest and see our, ourselves mature. And then we are not able to rest. Resting is important, but I am so thankful for this season of beauty because we can see the colors. We can see the majesty, the majestic appearance of this garden through the trees and the leaves. And it also helps us to appreciate what is to come. Change is good. 
And when we have that attitude that change is good, then we're able to deal with life. And nothing surprises us because we've, resol we've resolved in our mind that nothing lasts forever. So therefore, appreciate what is before you. Enjoy the now. I do enjoy my deck. It is very much a, um, a well-loved location. It was one of the best investments that I made on this property was to build this deck. And on it, I'm able to look out on the garden, but also to be able to bring the garden and the things that I love closer to me. So each week I have been adding things to the, the deck and just trying to create that space of beauty that I would want to see and want to sit in. We've had a couple of really nice days here in October. And so as October moves on and we're heading into November, um, I'm really, really enjoying uh, this atmosphere in my garden. I'm enjoying this October feeling. I'm enjoying my deck. And I'm really loving seeing my pumpkins. You know, this year, that's what I harvested the most. Uh, and the fact that they're all different colors. Uh, it's not the, the same orange pumpkin. I do have some and they're inside. But they're different types of pumpkin. Something that I've never really thought about. Before, I always thought the pumpkins were orange and that was it. But as the years have moved on and I'm really getting into vegetable gardening because I've always loved to garden with shrubs and perennials um, in the past but now that I've launched into growing my own food I really enjoy seeing the variety that nature offers us in food and especially with the pumpkins because for some reason I find it very easy to grow them in my garden and I just let them have their way. Next year I'm hoping that I will have more hydrangeas. Why? Because I just love the hydrangea flower. I love these big, beautiful mop head hydrangeas in the garden. And I was looking at some past videos that I had of the garden in years when this whole shrub would have been enveloped in that color from the mop head hydrangea. And especially in the back, you see that by the wall? Yes, that is my hydrangea hedge. And I'm still working on um, filling out back there I've had some success and each year I see more and more of the hedge developing and forming in the back. Now I need to plant some more daffodils because right there at the bottom um, is where I have the daffodils for spring. Then the next layer is the hosta 
and then finally the beautiful hydrangea shrub and you can see there that they have been growing here's one over here as well so my goal today is to plant in some more of the daffodils that I have I have like 50 of them and just to thicken up this area so that when I look down here that I see the daffodils I also cleared out this bed here in front of me and my intention is to add at least 25 if not more tulips here because there are already tulips in the ground but just to freshen this bed because this is such a prominent bed I was able yesterday to clean it out I know I didn't share it with you because when I start to work in the garden I really don't want to be so preoccupied with videotaping everything filming everything sorry <laughs> but yes I am going to show you a little bit of that today of me planting in the tulips and hopefully I'll be able to show you a little bit of me planting in the daffodils but in the meantime let's just enjoy the cleanup and enjoy what the garden looks like this morning it is beautiful a beautiful Saturday morning the last Saturday in October here in Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. Now, this bed is very interesting. It housed my zinnias and um, the purple perella and also cosmos. It has also um, my lilies are in this bed as well and some rose bushes that I have and I love this bed because I want to make sure that it gives me four seasons of interest so I do take time to um, plan it out and think about it and I'm very intentional about this bed. Right now, you can see that we had put in the impatience here. And they have flowered pretty well. Um, and there's still some flowers. That's why um, I kind of hesitated pulling them out. Because next week, we will definitely be experiencing a freeze and I will be able to pull them out easily. But right now, because there's still some greenery here, I'm enjoying them. Now here in this area, we've been having some really mild temperatures for this week. And today is going to be in the 70s, which is amazing for this time of the year. And I'm going to really revel in it and enjoy the garden this morning because it's warm and the next week it's going to be in the uh, 50s and at night the night temperatures should be going down to the high 30s in the 30s like 35 or so and in my garden there are pockets of different temperatures you know so some parts are going to really feel that cold and other parts will not and i think that this is a protected area and um, but still i need to get busy with um, setting that garden up for the the winter and making sure that i get my tulips in so today I am going to be placing them here just about 25 of them maybe and I think I'm going to use more of the pink 
colored ones that I have and uh, because in this bag there were a lot of pink pink when I say pink hot pink fuchsia as well as the lighter pink so it's just like a pink bag shades of pink will be in this bed here I also have a few um, alliums in this bed as well now I have not really put um, any daffodils and at first I was thinking that I was gonna put some daffodils in this bed but I don't think so I think I'm going to just let it be filled with uh, tulips and also with the alliums later on and then the roses will come up and we will also have the uh, the oh, oh, what is that called the lilies yeah my oriental lilies yeah, this is the bed. This is the bed. And here's a, a more close look at the hydrangeas. Very pretty. Loving them. And you know, the hydrangeas, they make really great bouquets because they fill up uh, the uh, vase and they just, they're great fillers. <laughs> so then you can then add other other flowers like I did with the zinnias and it just be really really pretty hello 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 there and welcome to Catherine's garden and home where we grow 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 together well it is really good to be here with you on this Saturday the second day of December and it is feeling mild out here. I was quite surprised. I was looking for it to be, you know, kind of um, cold and chilly because looking out the window, it is a dreary day. There has not been any sun. Um, we've been under cloud cover for a while here. And, um, but when I came out and stepped out, I said, because I really need to uh, get at it to start working on cleaning up the deck and making it look good because I've been away for the holidays uh, that has just passed in November and now I'll spruce up the place for December. So I'm out here and I am going to just take a walk around the garden just look and see what is happening there but also I want to really work on the deck and uh, clear out some of these things that are there and make it look a little more festive. I might even get ambitious and decide to, um, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But anyway, um, so let's take a walk around and also let us uh, do some cleaning up. Um, I might not walk a lot around. I think what I'm going to do is just give you some snippets of different parts of the garden that we've been working on and let you see that and then do some cleanup here on the deck and let it look good. Yeah, so stick around with me here at Catherine's Garden and Home where we grow, 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 grow together. Welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. And this is the second day in December, and this is what the garden looks like. I, I do love it. Uh, how it looks because you get to see the beds and you get to see what the garden looks like the structure the bones of the garden also I am able to see the major shrubs and plants that are going to give me some winter interest especially when it snows I like the rhododendron the arborvitaes uh, the sticks or stems of the hydrangea um, and even, you know, it's just going to just help everything look really good.
Yeah, it's going to just give me that winter interest. And I'm excited about that. My husband finished cleaning up this side of the garden. And you could see my beautiful arborvitae. Oh, well, my husband has been doing a lot of cleanup while I was away. He really helped to straighten out the garden and it, it looks really, really good. There's some things that I just want to just, you know, tweak a little bit. But overall, he did the major cleanup and uh, we are also gathering our leaves this year and we're going to try and do a lot more composting so what he did was with the beds um, because we have a lot of oak trees in our yard he um, he used the lawnmower and he ran over the leaves and we've been gathering the leaves and putting them in another bed where we want to build up the soil because um, we found that even though we planted things in that particular area, it was not um, as productive as it should be. So I think that that's, that area needs to be built up. And um, so we're going to start with a layer of leaves and with the grass clippings and uh, also using cardboard there and just really try to um, enrich the soil. Now there have been some um, people complaining about cardboard but I think that it is it's a good thing to use the cardboard because the worms love the cardboard they love that and any place where I have plant I uh, have um, worked on the soil and layered it with cardboard um, I definitely have a lot of worm um, action and the worm casting is really good for building up the soil so I'm happy about that but yeah we have um, done a lot of work here and we've also uh, see things coming along here and it's given me a lot of really great ideas about what I want to do for next year when the garden is like this when it's a uh, fairly clear and you don't see a lot of other things it opens up the opportunity for more um, you know exploration and planning and that is next and if you don't have my journal the intentional garden journal for 2024 now's the time to pick it up because we're going to be doing a lot of planning for next year and thinking about the garden and its usage so uh, go to Amazon or you can go down to I'll put it in the description um, where you can pick it up on Amazon or you can go to the website which is actually the best place to go because from the website it will give you uh, direct access to it on Amazon all right so check it out but yeah um, my idea this year is to really plan out the garden some more and uh, just think about what I want to do so even though um, things are looking you know barren right now um, as I said it is a good thing because this just gives me the opportunity to think deeper about the garden and I want you to think deeper about your garden too as well um, you know think about what you want to change what new beds you want to create and uh, in January we're gonna get to it we're gonna do some garden planning so now in December it's the time to pick up your garden journal the gardening intentional garden journal of 2024 from Catherine's garden and home there are areas here that have not really been touched yet but that's okay because of the fact that usually i i uh, clean this out in february um, and really cut it back and uh, and there are a lot of good things here in this bed that i want to settle in and get a chance to uh, you know to stay covered because when you cut back the crown you know cut down too low and you cut the crowns of the plants or too close to the crown then the cold air can go in and destroy it so I don't want to do that and back there I don't know if you could see back there I have my 
two fig trees there. Uh, there's the rose bush. There's also the vine from the um, the the grapevine, and we have uh, the hydrangeas and other things. But I believe that it'll be fine um, by February is when I really have to clean up this area. And, uh, and it gives winter interest. The other thing is that with leaving some of the shrubs up and so forth in the seeds, uh, it's good for the birds and the wildlife too, the birds in particular. So my husband was able to uh, clean out this bed real easy and the way that he did that was by using the lawnmower um, and it, it works it works because uh, the roots are at the bottom and they come back everything just returns again um, this is I think like the third or fourth year that we've done it this way uh, but what I'm amazed at is to see how my um, Arborvitaes here have grown up and are looking very, very good. We've had these Arborvitaes for um, at least three or four years now, and they were just small little plants that I got from Home Depot. But uh, this year they look really good. They're standing out, which is good. And So this is my food bed area, or what I would call the uh, food forest area. And um, these are my different trees that I have here, fruit trees. I don't know how they're going to do, but hopefully they will, they will survive the winter and they will grow. This area of the garden received a lot of cleanup, as you can tell, um, and it is a good thing too because uh, in the spring the daffodils will come up and they are going to be the first uh, plants to bloom. And then after that we'll have the hostas and then the hydrangeas will start to leaf out. What I am happy to see back here, especially in the rhododendrons, is the fact that some of them uh, have some flower buds on them. And so that means that we will have flowers on this rhododendron. Isn't that nice? And it was a small little pot, $5 pot from Lowe's that I got like four or five years ago. And now, it look at it, it looks really good. And uh, it looks like it's going to flower. Hopefully it will. Thank you so much for joining me here at Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. And there's so much to show you, so much to do. So stay tuned. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. Yes, and encourage me. Yeah, with comments down below. It's so good to be in the garden. The garden definitely is my therapy. This is my therapy. And I hope that your garden is giving you hope and joy and a sense of anticipation of what can be. Well, have a wonderful day. See you next time right here at Catherine's Garden and Home where we grow, 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 grow together. Have a nice day. Bye. On my dining room table, I made a nice tablescape of all of the pumpkins that I gathered that I really love and want to see here. Yes, on my table. And I want to make sure that I save these seeds. I think that they are so beautiful. And by the way, here is a copy or two copies of my journals that I 
put together the intentional garden journal I have it in paperback as well as in hardcover and I do love the paperback because to me it is just easy to use it has a glossy cover so if I spill something I'm able to wipe it off and it's just a really good size and then the hardcover is fabulous and would make a really great um, I would say keepsake of what is happening in my garden I love the color pictures both of them um, the pictures are in color of my garden but what I would do is I would use this one to write in to make my uh, messy work in this one and then trans you know transpose it into this one and keep this one as the keepsake you know the neat and tidy one um, and to pass on pass it on um, as an heirloom for my children and grandchildren and that they can see grandma's a great grandma's garden for more videos like subscribe and hit the notification bell and thank you so much for watching See you next time right here in Catherine's Garden. Bye.